Hey, welcome to worship this morning and welcome back. As we stand, let's stand and come into God's house for the ringing of the bell to call us into God's house. Amen, and please be seated. And as you're being seated, I always like to just lift up some things that are going on in the life of our community in Grace Church, so just note that. Recovery ministry is always a strong ministry on Tuesday evenings, and if you want to be a part of recovery ministry, that's an open meeting. This Tuesday morning, if you're men and you want to be a part of that little group that comes, we're always open to more. We meet outside because it's just a little safer for us, so we're meeting outside as the weather allows and we've got quite a ways i'm going till november we're gonna have 80 degrees till november yeah don't if that happens don't blame me blame god but that'll be great but we're gonna meet outside at the firehouse just a little way so you can be a little safer that's tuesday morning men if you want to join us eventually just note that youth ministry for elementary in middle school high school that's all going to start up in a couple of weeks and the sunday that that starts up we're going to have kind of a rally Sunday. We're trying to do the best we can with safe settings. We're going to have a car show, a motorcycle show, you name it. Bring your toys out. And I'm looking at some of you. You've got some nice toys. I've seen them, okay? No pressure, Donnie. But I've seen them. <laughs> and so bring them out. And let's just display them and have fun. And I can drool over them and things like that, you know? So just know that's coming up a couple Sundays in September. Other things are going on. Just take advantage of the ministry. There's always out there. And if you ever have a ministry idea, because we are in a different time, you're like, why can't we try this, Pastor Bob? Obviously, I'm going to ask you to help. Know that. But if you ever have a ministry idea, don't be afraid to let us know, because we're trying to experiment with new things. We're going to start looking at some small group type of things with Zoom. So just don't be afraid to let us know about that. But I want to call us into worship. And I want to do that with prayer. Um, just a little personal preference here. Some of you may not know this name. Some of you may. Don and Helen Lehman, they've been around our community for many years. I believe he sold insurance in his day. It was an insurance. He called me this week. Just He didn't want to make a big deal about it. I am because it's really cool. They celebrated 74 years of marriage this year. And the reason I say that, I'm a pastor. I work in a ministry where people don't want to be married, okay? I work in a ministry where like, hey, I, I've had it with her, or I've had it with him. And then Don calls me up, you know, 74 years. That's a witness for us. I'm looking at you guys. I know you, you're, you're a witness for us. We need to see that. We need to hear that. We need to have that mentoring. So for you that have hung in there and you've stayed the course, it's a witness to us as we continue to have our relationships build in a marriage setting also. And we're in a day where it's just not that popular. So just lift that up as a ministry as we go into prayer today. We celebrate many things. I also want to lift one more thing up. Um, I hope she's not listening. I hope she's on vacation. And maybe she is. I don't know. But Carrie Schaefer, uh, wonderful. I, I know. Got a proud mom here. But uh, I listened to the message that she gave last Sunday. Seriously, yeah, yeah. You guys, we have a great staff at Grace Church. Not everybody has that. And, and we just need to be grateful for that. We do. That is a rarity. It takes a hard time to find good staff. And Carrie put that message out there, genuine kindness, compassion leads to forgiveness. It's a very simple message, but it was poignant it was important. And when you can go away as a pastor and you got somebody like that, whether it's Nancy or Carrie or, or whoever, praise God. So Carrie, I don't know if you're listening. She's camping this weekend with Scott and a bunch of different families over at Sibley. But thank you, Carrie. Thank you for being on staff. Thank you for who you are. Let's, let's go to prayer, okay? Gracious Lord, we, we come before you because we do love you. And we just lift up these gratitudes of blessings that we have in our lives. Um, whether it be a witness of 74 years of marriage, a couple who, they don't want to make a big deal about it, but, but it is to us. 
It's a witness to us of what it means to be in a Christ-centered marriage. Whether it be a staff setting that just gels together, we're not perfect. And we have our days, Lord, when we're kind of in each other's hair. But we are grateful because you've gifted us with such passion for ministry. And it's authentic ministry. And Grace Church, need, every church needs that. But we get it, Lord, and we're grateful. And, and we, we lift up so many other things. We, we are in the midst of, of a pandemic and we worship you. And we're going to worship you, and we're not going to stop worshiping you. There's no pandemic that can take that away from us. And so, Lord, we just lift up that to you. We lift up the fact that we're in God's house today, and we're here because we want to hear you. We want to be touched by your word. We want to be graced by your love. And we want to put our judgment and, and, and that stuff at the door. That'll be ready for us. You know what, Lord, judgment and, and all that stuff will be ready for us when we leave. We are in Grace Church right now, and that's God's church. So open our hearts, open our minds. We want to see Jesus, Lord. Let us reach out and touch you. Lord, just open us up so we can hear you. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, amen. I want us to continue in prayer. I always lift up my prayer bookmarker and uh, just lift up the ministry of that. I'm going to talk about that today a little bit. But... Um, always lift up who's on here. Once again, I, I do not want to discredit the need. There's always going to be a need for us to improve on racism. That's never going to go away. But in Minnesota, specifically downtown Minneapolis, we had another issue this week. An issue is a polite word of saying we had rioting and looting. And our policemen were called down there. Our state troopers were called down there. Um, and they go. They don't question it. They don't question what they should be doing. They go. And you know what our ministry is here. We lift them up. And we lift up our firefighters. We lift up our medical responders. You know, I know a, a trooper this week, it was his wife's birthday on Wednesday. They go. So always remember them in prayer. It's, it's getting tough for them. Just remember them in prayer. I am not discrediting the need for ra racism is an issue. It is, uh, issue is a polite word of saying it's a sin. And that's never going to go. We have to work on that. But rioting and looting is not going to help us with that. So just kind of lift up where we're in need here, folks. And if you know they're going and you know this stuff's going on, pray. I know you are. I'm preaching to the choir, but pray for them. Just lift up our prayer bookmarker as we continue in prayer. Gracious Lord, we come before you because we do need you. We can't breathe without you. And we just acknowledge, Lord, you are a God of grace and forgiveness all the time. You never stop loving us. There's nothing we can do to keep you from loving us. The only way we can do that, Lord, is at, at the end of our life say we don't want to be a part of you. We'd rather choose hell than heaven. Lord, there's nothing on earth that we can do to keep you from loving us. Your cross, your, your resurrection, your grace does not stop. It doesn't pick and choose who to love over different skin color or, or different ethnic backgrounds. It just loves everyone. When you died, your blood was red for everyone. And we just acknowledge the vacuum, the the unbelievable that we can't even fathom the amount of grace that you pour out on us and it started because jesus christ the son of the living god said i will be human emmanuel i will understand their pain i will feel their hurt and i will bleed for them and i will die for them and then as if that isn't enough lord being on the cross and saying father forgive them because they don't know what they're doing then you say lord i want to give them resurrection and you allow us to be Easter people every day. That's the name of the God. We come with the gift of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we acknowledge that as Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Holy Spirit, and God Almighty. That is the name we come to you, and we lift up our needs to you, Lord. 
We lift up the names of those on our prayer bookmarker, the names on our heart, ourselves included, and we pray for healing, Lord, physically and emotionally in Jesus' name. Lord, we, we lift up this virus, this, this COVID virus, those who are on the front line that are trying to come up with that antidote. We're not going to stop praying for them. Bless them. Let their skills shine. Let the antidote happen. We need that, Lord. So we lift them up in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up our leaders to you. Now, this is a hard time to pray because we are becoming so divided as a nation. Lord, you're not about division. You're about praying for our leaders. And those leaders that want your will, Lord, let it shine. It's not about which party it's just about praying for our leaders, our government, Lord, our president to our local government, some of our own, and help us understand, Lord, your love is deeper than a need to riot or loot. And Lord, yes, racism is real. Help us reach out. Help us grab what we can out of our heart and understand a way to help in the midst of such a tension and divided world, Lord. We just lift our leaders to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we continue to pray, we, we lift up our mission statement. That's not about racism. It's about introducing a God who loves everybody, enabling so we can just keep spreading that love more and more, and it never stops. Help our mission statement come alive in Jesus' name, Lord, more than just a writing on the wall. And Lord, as a church, we pray for those men and women, their spouses, their children who are in our military. They're serving right now in places like San Antonio, Texas, places like Germany, Lord, the Carolinas, the reserves, and beyond that, Lord. Bless them. Tell them we are grateful and tell them we're praying for their safety continually each day, as well as their spouses and their children, in Jesus' name. Lord, just help us grab on to this daily need to pray. And as we do that, Lord, we remember those medical responders, those firefighters, those law enforcement, their spouses, their children. Lord, some of them are on duty right now. Would you please let them know they're being prayed for? Would you please let them know we are grateful for them? And we just continue to pray for them, Lord, covenantly each day. When we hear those sirens, Lord, when we see that helicopter flying at high speed, we know someone's in trouble and there's a group of people that are skilled and trained going to help them. So we just lift them up. We lift their spouses, their children up, and we, we want them to know we're praying for them each day in Jesus' name. And Lord, when your disciples said, teach us to pray, you taught us the Lord's Prayer. It encompasses everything. And so we're not just going to read it with the words on the screen because, Lord, it is meant to be more than read. We're going to pray it out loud together, but we're going to pray it because it's about you caring for us. It's about your forgiveness, your providing for us. It's about you never ending for us. So with meaning and depth, let's pray this prayer as the words are on the screen out loud together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom in the power, in the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. All right. As we continue to worship, I'm going to ask us to look to the call to worship. We are starting a new series. Um, when I did my, my sermon planning retreat back in June, I always, you know, ask, hey, what do you want to hear about? What do you want to hear about? And, and people email me, and I would like you to do that. Don't just take that for granted. And, Somebody emailed me and said, Pastor, would you do a, a series on prayer? I've done that before, and I'm going to do it again. And we're going to do a quick, it's about a four-week series up till Rally Sunday. And it's a very simple prayer. And it's going to be part of our call to worship. I, I just want to introduce it. 
It's a prayer that Pastor Max Licato introduced. He's an author, teacher, and Christian speaker. And it's, um, God, Father, you are good. I need help. They need help. Thank you in Jesus' name. It's going to be part of our call to worship. Father, you are good. I need help. They need help. Thank you in Jesus' name. First, we're going to read from Isaiah. Because Isaiah was, was, was a prophet in the Old Testament when the strongest nation in the world, Israel, was, was, was going away from God. They, 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 were, they were not recognizing God. They were forgetting who saved them. I think we can relate. And in the midst of that, that prayer is going to come up and it's going to be on our web page and it's just something that is a tool if you care to use it. It's a tool that you can use to just have each day for prayer. But, but let's stand for the call to worship from the Old Testament book of Isaiah leading into that prayer. But before that prayer, Isaiah says, remember this and consider, recall it to your mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old. And then here's that prayer. We're all going to do this together. Father, you are God. I need help. They need help. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. That prayer is going to be on our webpage by Tuesday for sure, so you can get that. And I'll give it to you. If you don't, just call. I'll give it to you too. But it's there. I'm going to ask April to come up. She's going to read the scripture. Come on up. And she is in a conversation. It's the words of Jesus she's going to be reading. The disciples asked questions. One of the questions they asked during the Sermon on the Mount, it was coming to an end in Matthew's Gospel. And the disciples, they, they didn't even have a lead in. There was no parable for this. They just literally got to a point where they said, Jesus, teach us to pray. And then April's going to read that conversation and she's going to stop just before the Lord's Prayer was introduced. But, how did Jesus answer when they said, teach us to pray? Matthew 6, 5 through 8. And now about prayer. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who pretend piety by praying publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. Truly, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, all alone. And shut the door behind you and pray to your father secretly. And your father who knows your secrets will reward you. Don't receive sight the same prayer over and over as the heathens do, who think prayers are only answered by repeating them again and again. Remember, your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. God bless the verse today. Thank you, April. And Thanks be to God for the reading of God's Word. Amen. All right, so we got a great message from Carrie. Just, just compassion, genuineness, compassion, kindness equals to forgiveness. Now we're going to start looking at prayer. And I've got that simple prayer. It'll be on our internet, and, and I, I can give it to you if you need it again. It's not a big deal. Father, you are good. I think I had a misprint there on my part. That would be my, imagine me. It's supposed to be, Father, you are good. Um, I need help. They need help. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And we'll get into that a little bit. I'm going to have that on the screen. But the first thing I want to look at is we're going to pick apart that prayer for just a few Sundays, little by little, and we're going to look at Father, you are good. But before we go to that phrase, Father, you are good, I want to just talk about prayer, okay? Some of you, and I know you because we have these sisters and brothers in our church, you can pray. And when I mean that, you can pray. And hats off to you. I call on you. I phone call you. And I will say, hey, I'm going through this for leadership. I need your prayers. I'm going, or, or I'll say, this person is really, really struggling. And, and I need your prayers. Now, those of you that are listening online, you know who I'm talking about. They got that gift. God be it. You don't flaunt it. You don't, we're not going to lift you up because that's not what you want to do. But I know you can pray. Me, on the other hand, I don't like this part about me. I have to discipline myself to pray. I really do. I had to do that years ago. It has to be a daily discipline. And I have to do that because 
I'm more like the person who prays when I need help, when things get desperate. You, you know what I'm talking about. We, we, we know there's God. We pray, but we pray when we need help. Then we really pray. You know, we don't make a theatrical performance about, we're, God, I'm not, I'm not, I need you. This, this thing's real. Okay? I was in the Wisconsin Dells, and there was a slide that John and I went on. And you stand in this tube, you with me? And then it, and then it counts down, and, and you're standing, it's a water slide, and it pushes you down. And the bottom of the tube that you're standing on, before you hit this, it drops out. So you don't, you just, boom, okay? And I thought, well, I, I can do that. John's done it before. And we start walking up to the top of this slide, and I'm like, I can do that, it doesn't look so high. We get up to the top, and I'm like, it's a lot higher up here than it did look from down there. And there's a couple of guys in front of me. And, and they're getting on the slide. And they're standing in the tube. And they're waiting for it to drop. And as it drops, they speak. I'm not going to tell you what they said. But they speak. And, and you can hear them. Every, all of God's people can hear them. And I look at this dad with a middle schooler behind me. And I'm like, oh, great. They can hear you. And he goes, yeah, they can. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I gotta, you know, I think about this a little bit. You can really hear them. And, and John gets up there, and he did good. He just went, whoa, and you could hear him. I'm like, I better think a little here. Don't speak out loud, okay? But I prayed as I dropped. <laughs> I prayed. I mean, it, it was fun. I actually went on it a couple of times. And, but I prayed. I was like, okay, I gotta live, I gotta live. And then within seconds, it's over, and you're like, oh, cool, let's go do it again. Anyway. <laughs> But we pray when we're in need. I was driving Interstate 90 down from Madison, Wisconsin to Rockford, Illinois, heading to Indianapolis. It was last Wednesday. That's a very busy interstate from Madison, Wisconsin to actually into Chicagoland because a lot of traffic is coming from Madison, Milwaukee, wherever, and it's coming out of Chicagoland and going up to Rockford. That's never, I don't know if you've ever traveled that interstate, Madison down to Beloit and into Chicagoland. That's a huge, heavy traffic interstate. You can't space yourself the way you want to. If you space your vehicle the way you need to at 65, 70 miles an hour, somebody's gonna, it's only a matter of seconds because somebody jumps in front of you you're not going to be able to. It's like riding on Daytona 500. You're just all there together and you're next to each other and you just behave and you be alert because there's not a room for grace or breaking. And we're going down there and it's under construction. It's always under construction. Much, and, and there's marked lanes now. We're in a spot by Beloit where there's you know, straight line lanes and you have to stay in your lane and they go around. Uh, construction areas, much like 94 coming from Maple Grove to, to, Ro to Rogers, if you've been that way. It's tight. Okay, that's life. We, we all do that, okay? I'm driving in that area. As God has been witness last Wednesday, probably about 65 miles an hour in my truck, Kelly and John, and we're driving down to Rockford, and we're going to end up going south towards Bloomington, Normal, on our way to Indy, and Indianapolis, I should say. And as God is my witness, it wasn't that way on the way back. They fixed it right away. You know the marking, they have the taping for lanes. They put taping down for lanes when they're under construction. There was no taping. It just disappeared for a short period. This is a very serious thing. All of a sudden, I got a lane. I've got a semi-tractor trailer next to me. I got one behind me. I got whatever in front of me, a pento. No, I don't know. But I got something in front of me, and I'm driving, and there's no lanes. You got three lanes of traffic that have lost their lanes. For whatever reason, the state of Wisconsin decided they didn't want lanes. I'm just kidding, but they didn't have lanes. I am scared. I'm just like, everybody's merging into me because they're supposed to go this way and they're not taped. And I saw a, a semi truck driver. I know some of you are truck drivers. It was a few seconds and the whole thing was over. But he starts coming into me and he's, behave, he's, he's aware we have a problem. He's going to mush me up like a mushroom. He's going to put my truck into a, you know. He, and he was paying attention. I was praying. I was like, Lord, this is not a good thing. And he, praise God, he was paying attention. He went over. I don't know what was on the other side of him. But within seconds, the whole thing was over. But we could have just been mulched up like 
sheet metal. And I just thank the Lord for that truck driver. I went like this to him as I went by him. And he did this. I was like, thank you. And then the lanes came back and it was all over. I was praying. I had to check my shorts when I got done with that little episode. But I was <laughs> praying. And, and we got through it. We pray when we're in need. We always do that. But we have to develop a discipline of prayer. And before we talk about it, just join me in prayer. Lord, the disciples ask you, teach us to pray. And you're going to help us do that the next few weeks. Not out of judgment, but out of just a necessity of grace appreciation. Graceful attitudes of conversations with you daily so we can learn to breathe clearer and see clearer and hear clearer. Open us up, not out of judgment, out of grace, as we look at that prayer, Lord. Uh, God, Father, you are good. I need help. They need help. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. So the first thing we, we have to get through in our heads here is, let's get beyond that prayer type of life where all we do is pray when we're in need. The doctor just came back with a report that we haven't had in five years, and we're like, I gotta pray about this. Or the child, the adult child calls up and they got in, in this type of situation, or they're getting a divorce, we gotta pray about this. That's good, don't get me wrong, don't stop doing that. But God would love to hear from us every day. God would love to hear from us in such a way that, you know, when we get that gym fitness center, we, we pay that monthly fee for that fitness center, and we've been paying it for, for eight months, and all of a sudden we realize I've only been in there once, and that was to use the hot tub. And we're wondering, what is going on here? You know, what we, you stare at the bike, but the bike don't work unless you get on it. You know, and you start pedaling. And once every six months isn't going to do much good. It's like three, four times a week. And, and, and God is asking us to give him some time, some communication, some conversation and prayer each day. We're not going to be perfect. There's going to be days like, oh, I messed up. Well, let's start again. It's the first word of our, the first word in the name of our church is, yeah. Don't let the judgment of the evil one say, oh, you're no good, you missed three days, you, God will never love you. That's the evil one just saying, I got you where I want you. We just keep starting again and again and again. And we keep doing it every day out of grace. And we find that place where it becomes routine. Say, here I am, Lord. I want to have a conversation with you. And it's hard to do that. It is really, really hard to do that. You know what? If you're like me, I'm not that prayer junkie. I learn that discipline every day. It's easier some days I feel like. I feel like this. I feel like God's not listening. I watch the news. I see what's going on in, in downtown Minneapolis. I get all those um, memories of what happened in May in my neighborhood that I grew up in, that I walked through. And I get all those memories and I get mad again. And I feel like God's not listening. Sometimes we feel like it's easier to get a human being from the cable company on the phone than it is to get God to hear us. I'm not dishing God. I'm just saying the honesty of how tough it is to pray. And if you ever tried to get a human being on the cable, from the cable company you're paying, that takes a day too, okay? But God is listening to us. He's ready for us. We just don't hear him the way that he would like us to hear him. And I'll get into that. But before I do that, that simple prayer, and just pick it apart. Father, you are good. I need help. They need help. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, you are good. I need help. They need help. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. And what we're going to look at is we're going to pick that prayer part each Sunday for just a few Sundays. And let's start with the greeting, Father, you are good. Now, some of you are saying, Pastor Bob, you know and I know that God is not male or female. I, I hear you. You are actually right. Don't ever forget that. 
Okay, God is God. But there are times, there are times when we need to come to our Father. And we need God to be our Father. And we need that as, as, as a person in a relationship with a God who loves us. We need to simply say, I need a Father. I am one of those who had a wonderful father and mother. I mean, they weren't perfect in any sense of the word, but they are always there. My father especially always loved me. Um, he, he taught me the consequences of doing wrong things. He did teach me that. But he always loved me. He was always there. I remember him standing out and how many cold winters watching me ski race some soccer games, all that stuff, working with him. I have such good memories of working with him on the job site, amazingly. Um, all that stuff, I, I'm grateful for that. But some of us, we don't have good images of a father. Our father beat us. Our father was nice enough and, and willing enough to give birth to us, but then left the day we were born and never looked back. Our father was an image that I don't ever want to see as a father. Our father abandoned us. That's some of us. I, I think of a young lady uh, years ago, about eight years ago, she's in recovery. She's about six months into recovery. Her father was mean. Her father made her watch, watch him kill her mother and then went to jail never to see him, her again. That's not a father. Not a father at all. And she was abandoned. And when she realized... And she, she was getting really good help and recovery. And she started crying tears of joy. And I mean this for like a month. Because she began to realize that there's a God in heaven who wants to be her father. Are you hearing me? She wants to be her father. Because she, he wants, God wants her to know, I loved you that much. And I will never stop loving you. No matter what your father did to you. No matter how bad your father hurt you. No matter how bad your father cut your wounds. I'm your God. And I want everything good for you. And therefore, I'm always going to be your father. When we can understand Father, you are good like that young woman did and begin to understand in spite of what her earthly father did to her. When we can understand Abba, Father, when we can understand when Jesus looked at his father and he said, Father, forgive them. When we can understand when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, and he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. We begin to understand, Father, you are good. And that's the start of this prayer. That's the start of the honesty of it. The problem was, the problem was in those days, they had a really more political, more, more politic run church. And I really mean that. They were doing it for money, for greed. The pastors were... We're in it for, for arrogance. They wanted greed. They wanted money. And the politics of, of pastoring that day was pathetic. And so Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, don't be like them. I've been guilty. Oh, our God, gracious Lord, help us. You know, we think because we've been to graduate school and seminary, we can pray better than everybody else. Well, that's just simply not the case. We all bleed passion, and we all bleed anger, and we all bleed the need for forgiveness. I've been angry with God. I have shaked my fist at God a number of times. And the beautiful thing is, God the Father still loves me after I'm done shaking my fist at Him. So Jesus looked at the disciples and honestly, whenever you pray, don't be like them. Don't make a theatrical performance out of it. Go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. And then also... If we want to be to our Father, you know, first and second and third John, it always says beloved. 
If you look at those books in the, in the New Testament, it says the beloved. The beloved. That means that God loved us always. There's no end to God's love. You, you and I, we are the beloved. No matter what we do, we're beloved. And I've done some ugly things. We are beloved. And when we go and we make that prayer room that way, wherever it is, and, and you don't, it, this is not an excuse to add on to the house a new hot tub, okay? <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It can be a closet. You know, you know where my prayer room is? Check it out. Most days you see it. You drive by around 8.30, Grace Church, there's a red Dodge in the parking lot, and you go right into my office. I've got my prayer bookmarker that I have in my, my Bible out there. This is not the one I use. This is the one I use on Sundays, but I have another Bible that I read through. And I put my prayer, prayer bookmarker. I have little notes on it. I spend about 20, 30 minutes reading the Bible in prayer. I know people are having surgery. I spend time with that daily. I know people are trying to recover from cancer. I know some people, they're, they're in the middle of a divorce. Um, they're looking for a job. I got some law enforcement are going through some tough stuff. That, so I put a little note by them. That's a prayer room. My desk in that office down there is my prayer room. And I am not perfect. There's some days where it's just not happening like it should. But make a prayer room so you have a place to pray. Maybe it's your closet. Maybe it's your scrapbooking room. Maybe it's your garage. Maybe it's your boat when you're fishing. I don't know. Make a prayer room. And don't make a performance out of it. God's not looking for an Oscar. Our Father's looking for honesty. That's all God wants is honesty. When you're praying, do not heap empty phrases. Here he goes about the politician's of pastoral leadership of his day. That when he says Gentiles here, he's not talking about the non-Jewish people. Gentiles is a vague term that's directed at what you shouldn't do. And he's specifically saying the pastors of the day, the priests and the Pharisees of the day, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. I think all of us pastors need to listen to that one. I thought I'd get an amen out of that one. Anyway, <laughs> they think they will be heard because of their many words. All you got to do is just say, Lord, I don't have enough money to pay the bills this month. I'm $100 short. You know it, and I know it. I need a way out. I need an answer. When I was in college, we had a truck repair. I had a little Chevy Love. It had a carburetor in it in those days, and... I had to get it repaired and I had to drive seven miles out of town to the churches. I had preached at two small churches in my last few years in college, United Methodist, and I had to get that thing fixed because I had to get out there. We didn't have, um, six, it was $65 to fix it. We didn't have it. We were living on macaroni and cheese and red Kool-Aid and we didn't have it. Uh, we didn't. It wasn't there. You can take a look at the bank account. It wasn't there. And a lady came out from that, one of the churches I'm preaching, she worked in the business office of the college. She didn't know I had this bill. I was this close to calling my dad because I didn't know what to do. And I hated calling my dad because I felt like I failed. And he told me it's okay and calm, but I, I was this close. And she stepped out as I was going through the business department of the college building to go to a class at Greenville College. And she stepped out and she just said, oh, Bob. Yeah. I thought she was going to say hi. She was a person working there. She says, I was praying this morning. And she handed me a check for $65. I don't know what you need this for, but I think you do. I was blown out of the water. I was 22 years, 21 years old. And I'm like, how do you know this stuff? By the way, I went and got it fixed and went and had church service. I mean, all we got to do is ask God. It's going to happen. But here's the problem with prayer. And this is about saying, Father, you are good in spite of what happens. We've got we to gotta trust God in the answers. We have to trust God. Because it doesn't answer like that all the time. You and I are old enough, we know that. I think of some of us in our congregation, 
They've been battling cancer for how many years and it's not answered yet. I think of a young lady up in Fargo right now who's been battling leukemia at 25 years old and she's in the hospital right now battling an infection. It's not COVID. They can't figure out what it is and she's trying to get to remission in two and a half years into this battle. And God's going to answer. I have reached a point in life where I know I'm never going to spell until I get to heaven. That's life. Whoopee. God's going to help me spell. He brought these computers into my life, and they have these wonderful things that, that just do everything for me. And then you got a person by the name of Nancy Heff. She just cleans it all up wonderfully. God's going to answer prayer in a way that we don't like sometimes. And we have to love God. We have to fight through the evil one saying, if that's a God who loves you, then walk away. We've got to fight through that and trust God for the answers. As I bring it to a close, let me see if I can be very specific. <coughs> we, excuse me, we, um, we hit last March, the last two weeks of March, and our country needed to shut down. And we all watched our stock market just go boom. And we watched people, restaurants. I remember being at the Queen Bee last late March and talking to Jennifer, and it was the last day they were going to be open. She didn't know what she was going to do. Doris didn't know what she was going to do. All everything was boom. And I, I said to myself as I began to pray with um, online. First of all, I thank I thank the people of Grace Church because about 10 years ago, we created an online ministry that we thought we'd never need like we have lately. Those of you that are online, thank you. And then I began to pray and said, okay, Lord, this will all be over by the end of April, right? Seriously, I, this, just get us through April. Just get us to Easter Sunday. It'll all be over, right? We'll be fine. We all know what happened. May came along, didn't it? I thank the Lord, Carrie, Carrie Frank, Carrie Schaefer, sorry, Scott, Carrie Schaefer came up to me and said, by the middle of April, I'm going a little scooters because I'm like, I don't know what to pray for anymore. I said, hey, they're doing this worship by car in Kentucky. So we started doing that. And I began to pray. Now we're going we're, we're gonna to be back in the sanctuary with masks. We're going to be all right. You know what? I thought this thing was going to be over by May. That didn't happen. But I'm still going to pray. Because someday it's going to be over. And we're going to make it through. And when we get done, on the other side of this, we're going to be better than we are. And the Holy Spirit's going to open the gates. I don't know how yet. I don't have that answer yet. But I know in the midst of the rioting, the looting, and the pandemic, we're going to get through this because I'm not giving up on my father because he loves me more than I love him. And we're going to get through it and the Holy Spirit's going to deliver us in a way that's going to be amazing. I wish I could tell you what that looks like. When I know, I will let you know. And when you know, it'd be nice if you tell me because I need to hear it. But we're going to be there. We are going to see this happen. Until then, we're going to worship by car. We're going to worship in the sanctuary. We're going to make it work. We're going to do Wednesday nights the way we're doing Wednesday nights. We're going to make it work. I'm going to figure out Zoom with a lot of grace. We're going to hang in there because we have peaceful trust in our Abba, Father. And we're going to keep praying, Father, you are good. I need help. They need help. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Before Jesus introduced the Lord's Prayer, he said, don't be like them. See, David already knew I did that. That's done a great help. Don't be like them. Because God already knows. God's, God's got the pandemic. I wish that I could feel a little safer about that. I really do. But I know in my heart, God's got the pandemic. God's got the political junk that's going on in the world. And somehow we're going to battle through racism. We're going to teach our children to be better than us. We're going to do that. Because God knows who's on the throne. I'm going to invite Helen to come up. She's going to play a song from The Faith We Sing. You have your mask on, you can sing. <clears throat>
It's all right. If you want, you don't have to sing it that loud. Just sing as, as you want. But it, it's in the faith we sing, and David's going to put the words on. 2086. 2086. Just use it as a prayer time. The words will be up there. Helen's going to play, play it through twice. Just use it as a prayer time. Don't be afraid to sing. If you have your mask on, that's fine. Just use it as a prayer time. soft piano music in the background. Lord, it's good to be able to sing again. It's good to hear some voices. It's good to have you as our Father. Help us, Lord. Help us see you. We know you're out there. And we know you love us. Because, Father, you are good. I need help. They need help. Thank you. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Stay just for the closing challenge. Gracious Lord, help us know you as Abba Father to be loved. Because you are good. We need help, I need help, Lord. 